sharing good news of great joy to all people. Elation Church. Welcome to Elation Church. We're excited that you're joining in with us this week for worship. And if you're watching from across Four Corners, Florida, we invite you to come be with us every Sunday morning in the gymnasium of Citrus Ridge Academy. Citrus Ridge Academy is just off of Highway 27 on Sand Mine Road. We have free coffee and donuts at 930 and our worship service begins at 10. We'd love to see you there next week. Now, each week when we begin our online service, we start out by singing a song and we are truly blessed. So let's sing about the goodness of our God. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your blessings in our lives. And now, as we set aside this time to come together to look into your word, I pray that you would speak to our hearts, cause your truth to come alive on the inside of us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Well, welcome to week number four in our series that I've entitled, Putting on the Armor of God. Now, the armor of God is found in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Let's listen to God's word. He says this, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, 
against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, by which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Now, each week we've been talking about this spiritual warfare that we are engaged in on a daily basis as followers of Christ. And we talk about there's, there's never warfare taking place that's not for a purpose or for some kind of objective. Now, throughout history, we see that wars have taken place for over land, over resources, over freedom, over control, over hate. And those are all objectives. Those are the objectives that we see in the wars throughout the history of the world. Now, Jesus talked specifically about this spiritual warfare in John 10.10, 10, when he says that our enemy, the thief, does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. And then Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So he tells us we have an enemy who's out to steal from us, who's out to kill us, who's out to destroy us. But he came, Jesus came to give us life to the fullest till it overflows. An overflowing life of peace and hope and joy and love. Life to the fullest abundant life. Now, in this daily spiritual warfare, our enemy has an objective, actually a couple of main objectives. Uh, the first one is to steal all the blessings and promises that God has given to us. His second objective is to hinder the advancement of the kingdom of God in this world. So, because his objectives are against us, our objectives in this spiritual warfare are the exact opposite of his objectives. Our objectives in this warfare are to enjoy the victorious, abundant, and blessed life that Jesus has provided for us and to advance the kingdom of God in the earth. That's why it's important that we put on the armor of God, that we recognize that there is spiritual warfare taking place and that we get prepared for it on a daily basis. How do we put on this spiritual armor for this spiritual battle? Well, we put on the armor of God to get ready for this spiritual battle that takes place in our minds on a daily basis with our words. Yeah, that's where the battleground is. It takes place in our minds. So we put on the armor of God with our words. Now our words or our profession or our confession serves a threefold purpose. First of all, it positions us on God's side because our words need to be in line with what God has said and what God has promised to us and what God has called us to do. So according to his word, when our words confess what God has said, then we are now positioned on God's side. And it's important if we're going to be victorious that we're on the winning side God's side is the winning side. So we need to position ourselves on his side. It also, our words, establish our hearts and our minds in this truth that God has given us. And the other thing it does, it is it announces our victory over our enemy because we are fighting from victory, not for victory. And our enemy hates it when we go ahead and tell him that we've won even when the battle begins. We've already won the battle because we are more than conquerors in every situation because we're in Christ and God never loses. Now, 
as we put on each piece of this armor of God, we started out with stand with the belt of truth. And the belt of truth we talked about, I mean, it can mean more than this because all of God's word is truth. But here's some very important things that we need to get ready for every day. We need to realize that we have an enemy, that we're engaged in this warfare, and that our enemy, Satan, wants us to believe his lies and not experience the abundant and blessed life that Jesus has provided for us. So that's truth that we need to understand on a daily basis. We also need to take hold of this fact that God's word is truth. If God said it, is true. No matter what we see or no matter what we feel or no matter the doubts that come to us, no, God's word is truth. God is true. The other thing that we need to know for sure every day in this belt of truth is that God loves us and nothing can separate us from his love. And then also to put on the belt of truth, we need to go ahead and announce our victory and say, I am more than a conqueror in every situation. Because that's what the Bible says about you. And that's what the Bible says about me. We are more than conquerors. We don't just barely win. We overwhelmingly triumph, the Bible says. So we put on the belt of truth with those words. We put on the breastplate of righteousness because we stand with the breastplate of righteousness. And that truth that we speak with our mouths to put on this breastplate of righteousness every day we need to remind ourselves, I am right with God because Jesus' death on the cross made me righteous. I've been acquitted of all the charges. I've been declared innocent by the judge of the universe and of eternity. And I am accepted by God. See, we need to put on this breastplate of righteousness so that we will be able to stand in this daily battle. Last week, we talked about standing in and for the gospel of peace. And we not only have experienced the gospel and the good news and embraced eternal life and the peace of God. No, we need to remind ourselves on a daily basis because this battle is coming our way and there are fiery darts that we're going to talk about today and on a more detailed basis. They're, they're coming at us. So we need to get ready before the battle begins. We need to put on those sandals of the gospel of peace with our words by saying, I have peace with God. I have the peace of God. I will not be paralyzed by fear. I have good news to share. And the Holy Spirit empowers me and gives me the words to say every day. So that's what we need to do every day. We need to put on those sandals of the gospel of peace. Now today, we're progressing to Ephesians 6, 16, where it says this, above all, after we've looked and put on those three pieces of armor, it says, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So today, we're going to be talking about the shield of faith. You see, those three pieces of armor that we talked about over the last three weeks, see, we put on some pieces of armor before the battle begins. But then there are other pieces that we take up, like the shield, like the shield of faith, to use in battle. It's not part of our clothing armor. It's something that we take up. And the Bible says, above all, taking up the shield of of faith. Now, back in the time when this was written, when Paul is sitting there in a prison cell looking at a Roman soldier and he has on all the armor, uh, the Holy Spirit begins to tell him how these pieces of armor, these physical pieces of armor, it, they become an illustration for the spiritual armor that we need to put on every day and take up every day. Now, there are two types of Roman shields during this time in history. One was a small circle that had straps that would go on your arm. And you would use that, they, the soldiers would use that as an aggressive weapon to beat people back. Or if they saw something coming like a sword or a spear, 
they would move it around so it was a small shield that was strapped to their arm. That's one type of shield. The other type of shield is a large, <laughs> is a large door shaped shield where a soldier could get behind this large door shaped shield and the enemy couldn't even see the soldier. All they could see was the shield and they were completely and fully protected. All right. Now, there were specific Greek words that talked about specific shields. And the specific shield in Ephesians 6.16, take up the shield of faith, is talking about the large door-shaped shield. Now, there were times when soldiers would get together and line up and have these shields in front of them, and they would put the shields together and be behind them, and then people would come up behind them to shoot arrows or to throw spears, and it was just like a complete shielded wall for these Roman soldiers. They would also form a V pattern, and, and there would be holes in the middle of the shields, and they would stick their spears or their swords through there, and then they would all run and march together towards their enemy. Now, the Bible says in Ephesians 6.16, above all, taking the shield... Let's see, this is a... This is a picture for us, this large door shield. And he says, take the shield of faith. It's not some physical shield that we carry around. No, this is, a, this is a picture. It's an illustration giving us the idea that faith, the faith that pleases God, the faith of God, as a matter of fact, it's God's faith. You know what? It's like a big door shield. And he says, take the shield of faith. So I know we've had a whole series on faith, but just to recap for those of you who weren't with us during that time, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith, the faith that pleases God is founded on what God has said. So we got to hear it first. And then we got to wholeheartedly believe what we have heard. We've got to believe the power of the Word of God. we got to believe that it is for us for right now, right? we got to believe it wholeheartedly. And then faith isn't faith without some kind of corresponding action. Because the Bible says faith without works is dead. So there has to be some kind of corresponding action that comes out of what we have heard from God and what we have believed and trusted in what God has said. Now there's a corresponding action. So we kind of hammered that in for, for over 10 weeks, I believe, in a series that we talked about on faith. But I want to point out to you in Mark chapter 11, verses 22 and 23. Verse 22 says this, Because Jesus had just spoke to a fig tree. As he was passing, he went to try to get some fruit off of a fig tree, and the leaves on this fig tree let him believe that there would be fruit on that fig tree. And when he got there, there was no fruit, and it was only leaves. So Jesus said, hey, because you're false advertising, nobody's going to eat your fruit anymore, wither up from the roots. The very next day, him and his disciples walked by the same fig tree, and it had dried up. I mean, it was just dried up and dead. Leaves had fallen off. It was just dead. And the disciples were like, wow. I mean, you just spoke to that tree. I mean, and here's, here's what Jesus said to them. Because they were trying to figure it out, how it happened, how he was able to do that. And they marveled at that. And, and Jesus, in Mark eleven twenty two, 22, it says, Jesus answered and said to the disciples, have faith in God. Now, if you look at the Greek words here, it doesn't necessarily say have faith in God because in other verses all through the New Testament, every time the word in, the preposition in is in the sentence, 
there's a Greek word that's spelled E-N instead of I-N like our English N, all right? But that word does not exist. What Jesus literally said to the disciples was, have God faith. He looked at his disciples and he says, have God faith. Have God's faith. Have God-like faith. We could put it that way. It doesn't really say have faith in God. He said, have God-like faith. Because Jesus had just demonstrated God faith. But he told his disciples, have God faith. So, right after that, in verse 23, Jesus tells the disciples, how God faith works. And if we're going to take up the shield of faith, we're going to have to have God faith, and we need to know how it works. So Jesus told them, immediately following in the next verse, how God faith works. And Mark eleven twenty three 23 says this, Jesus said, For assuredly, I say to you. What does that mean? It means, better listen up, because I'm telling you something very important, and I'm telling you something that is true. For assuredly, I say to you, and then he says, whoever, whoever, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. So Jesus says, this is how God faith works. And he says, whoever. Notice that Jesus didn't say, um, well, if you happen to be the son of God on the earth and you say something, <laughs> that's, that's not what he said. He didn't say, if you, have, if you happen to be a highly educated theological seminary graduate. No, he, he didn't. Even, he, he said, whoever. So God's God faith works. For whoever. You know what? That should make us happy because I'm a whoever. Are you a whoever? I mean, it includes anybody. Everybody who is in Christ and speaking based on what God has said, it works for all of us. Because Jesus wouldn't have told them to have God faith if they couldn't have it because they weren't God. I'm not God. You're not God. So he says, whoever. And then he says, whoever says, see, the corresponding action that is super important for you and for me is this. I mean, there, there are corresponding actions of obedience and, and things like that that we've talked about. But I tell you, one of the most important corresponding actions for you and for me is to say what God has said. To say what God has said. Because if it's God faith, then it's not just Dean's words or Dean's thoughts or your words or your thoughts. You're saying what God has said. You're putting God's word in your mouth. And I've said it before, God's word in your mouth is just as powerful as God's word in God's mouth. Because it's God's word. Not because it's your mouth, but because God has said it and you're speaking it into this world as a representative, as an ambassador speaking for the kingdom of God. And it says, Jesus said, I said to you, whoever says to this mountain. Now, when it comes to spiritual warfare that we're talking about right now, and we're talking about taking up the shield of faith, we know what this mountain is because we saw it in the verses, right? Ephesians 6.16 says, Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So the mountain in this spiritual warfare, and remember, um, Jesus isn't talking about a specific mountain, a physical mountain. He's talking about the mountains that are in our way that are keeping us from what God has said, from what God has promised, from what God wants us to do. Those are the mountains in the spiritual warfare, and the mountains are the fiery darts of the enemy. 
Because with the shield of faith, we can quench all the fiery darts. So that's the mountain. The fiery darts are the mountain. What are the fiery darts? We've talked about it before in previous weeks, but they are doubts. They're lies. They're negative thoughts, suggestions, negative feelings, temptations. Those are the fiery darts of the enemy. And now I want you to think about this. We put on those pieces of armor, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the sandals of the gospel of peace. We put all that on to prepare for the coming spiritual battle that's going to take place that day. But as the battle rages, because the battle doesn't just happen one time right in the morning when we put on all the armor. No, the battle, those thoughts, those lies, those suggestions, those feelings, those temptations, they're coming at us at the most unexpected times in our day. So we suit up to get ready for it, but then we take this shield of faith to quench every single fiery dart, every single doubt, every single lie, every single negative thought, every single suggestion, every single negative feeling and temptation. We quench those with the shield of faith. And Jesus says, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast in the, tea, in the sea, and does not doubt in his heart. See, remember, we hear, then we believe, wholeheartedly believe. So if we're saying what God has said, but we're doubting it on the inside, while we say it, I bet this won't work. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. I, I, you know, I just get beat up all the time, and I don't even know why I'm going to say it, just because the preacher tells me to say it. But, you know, I really don't believe it, but I'm going to try it. No. <laughs> if it's going to work for you, if it's going to work for me, then we can't doubt that what God has said coming out of our mouth is going to quench those fire. We can't doubt it. We got to know that God's truth is going to quench those fiery darts, those doubts, those lies, those fears, those feelings. We, we got to know it. So we don't doubt in our heart, but believe. We believe. We don't doubt. We, we stand firm and established in what God has said, we don't waver back and forth wondering if it's going to work or not. No, we don't doubt and we believe. What are we believing? Those things that we've heard? Those things that somebody else has said? No. Jesus said we got to believe and not doubt the things that we say. He says, whoever says to this mountain, does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things he says will be effective, will be done. What does he say? He says, we will have whatever. See, it says, whoever can have whatever they say. When it's based on the power of the word of God, when we don't doubt it, when we believe it wholeheartedly, we can have it. We can have it. Now, I'm not saying you can just come up with anything and say, well, oh, well if I say it and I believe it and I don't doubt, I'll have whatever I say. See, you're, I did not say that. And I'm not saying that. I'm saying if we say what God has said, if we say what God has said, when we are in this spiritual battle and when these doubts and when these lies come and when these suggestions come and when these feelings come, when these temptations come, if we stand up and if we say what God has said about us, about this situation, about this temptation, see, the Bible has it all covered. There's nothing that's not covered in Scripture. Any any challenge that you face, God has spoken about it. 
So we've got to be students of the Word of God, and we've got to find out what God has said about the things that we face on a regular basis so that we can stand and take up this shield of faith, and then we can begin to proclaim what God has said and not doubt and believe, and we know that we're going to have whatever we said because we're just saying what God said, and God is all-powerful, and He says the truth. So we can have whatever we say when we say what God has said. So whoever says and doesn't doubt in his heart, but believes those things that he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. And listen, I didn't say that. Jesus said it, and he's not a man that he should lie. 2 Corinthians 10, verses 4 and 5 talks about this spiritual warfare. It says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not fleshly, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, for casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. See, the doubts and the lies and the temptations and the feelings that come to us from our enemy, you know what? They're exalting themselves to a higher level than what God has said. So our weapons, to fight against it, they're not carnal, but they're mighty, because with them, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians, it says that we can bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. We can take each thought captive to the obedience of of what God has said with the shield of faith when we know what God has said and then when we know this negative thought negative feeling doubt lie temptation when it comes our way when we know what God has said we can take that thought captive we can quench every single one of those fiery darts from the enemy with our shield of faith and let me tell you something. God's Word is so powerful and so broad in telling us everything that God says about us and for us that it'll quench every fiery dart of the enemy. But we have to know what His Word says about us. So, as we take up the shield of faith, as we take it up, here's the way we do it. I have total trust and complete confidence and what God has said. And I filter my thoughts through God's truth. And then we got to know this. God's word in my mouth blocks and extinguishes all the lies, doubts, suggestions, feelings, and temptations that come from the enemy. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for your truth. I thank you for your word. God, I pray that you would help us to take hold of it. I pray that this just wouldn't be a religious exercise and more head knowledge, but that, God, we would take your truth and put it into practice in our daily lives so that we will live in victory. We will possess your promises. We will enjoy abundant life and so that we will personally be involved in advancing your kingdom in this earth as your ambassador, as your representative in the earth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining with us here today at Elation Church and thanks for being a part of our Elation family. If today's message was an encouragement to you, would you consider sharing it with all of your social media friends? I mean, it's so simple and so easy to hit that share button right under the video. In doing that, you'll be coming alongside of us in our mission of bringing good news of great joy to all people. We'll see you right back here next week at Elation Church. This online worship experience was brought to you by the friends and partners of Elation Church.